What's up, ReapTube? All right, so once upon a time, I was falling in love, and now my tank is falling apart. Um, I think I am the biggest issue with my tank right now. So I wanted to give you guys an update before things get any worse. I've neglected the tank when I shouldn't have. I've added too much to the tank when it was unnecessary. Um, let's just, I'll just show you what I mean. All right, so what you guys are looking at now is what my tank looks like currently. I have about half of my Zoas doing okay. Half of my Zoas are closed up and about half of that half have just melted away completely. I'm gonna try to give you guys a timeline of what happened, how we got here, what I've done and what I've added to the tank um, and what I believe is the main cause of this issue. All right, so it was the beginning of November. Um, I did make a video about how I removed all the hair algae from my tank. I just removed the rocks and manually scrubbed all the hair algae off the rock and uh, placed it back in the tank and things were good. Um, around Thanksgiving time is when I saw the hair algae and bryopsis started to come back. So I decided to get some vibrant I got me a cleanup crew, just a bunch of trochus snails, and um, I got some reflux. I acquired all this stuff and started dosing it um, a week after Thanksgiving. Um, so that's when I just started dosing the vibrant. I added in the cleanup crew and then I added in the reflux. The reflux direction specifically says to leave your tank alone for three weeks without wa doing water changes. Um, and that third week, was the week I had already planned to go on a trip for scuba diving. So I thought, great, as soon as I get back from my trip, I can uh, just do a water change and um, it'll be perfect timing. So it was about a week after dosing the reflux, I did see some changes, but like an idiot, I decided to get a fish. I decided to get a tang to help out with the algae. And I, in my previous video, I mentioned about making mistakes and I did it again. I didn't quarantine this fish. I just did a couple of water transfers and dipped him with Paragard and um, I added him into the tank. And then two weeks from that point, uh, the reflux had completely wiped out the bryopsis and hair algae from my tank. It was amazing. And that's when I noticed some of the zoas that were just smothered in the bryopsis never recovered, even though the bryopsis was gone. Um, and then I started seeing some of my trochus snails weren't moving at all so I had picked a few up and I would smell them and they smelled terrible so they were obviously just decaying in my tank which raises my nitrates and not only that the week I was gone scuba diving I had installed an auto feeder which is the first time I had fed pellet food consecutively for a week which also raised my nitrates so what I'm thinking what may have happened was the reflux just killed all that bryopsis and hair algae raising the nitrates in my tank. Um, I couldn't do a water change to get it out and the high nitrates because of the auto feeding and because of the reflux may have killed my snails and that obviously feeding into the nitrates just raises it more, turning this into a big issue that I needed to fix right away. And not only that, remember that tang we added in my tank? Um, it had ick, so it gave ick to my tank. And on the trip while I was gone, the tang died and my coral beauty angelfish died. When I got back, the clownfish were dead and it didn't take long for the other three or four fish to, to die. I actually do still have the blue-green chromies. If you look in the video, he's the only one there swimming around. And that's just because I think because he lets the fire shrimp clean him, he actually bugs the fire shrimp until the shrimp cleans him up. So between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, I think uh, it's 10 days, I did three 30% water changes and I saw very little uh, improvement after each water change, but that was it and no change after that. And up to this point, the only things I was testing for were nitrates and phosphates, and they were both high. And with each water change, they would get lower and lower. So I decided on New Year's Day just to test every parameter. Even though I don't dose calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, I just went ahead and tested those. They're 
pretty constant with my water changes. Um, they may be even higher a little bit now because I've done so many water changes in a shorter amount of time. But I went ahead and just tested those and they were all good. My alkalinity was at 9.2, calcium 410, and magnesium at 1320. Now my pH was high, it was above 8.5, so I had dosed a little bit of white distilled vinegar in there to get that down, which I'm sure upset the zoanthids a little bit more, but I had to get the pH down, and I was able to do that. My salinity at 1026 always, my nitrates I was able to get down to 5, and phosphates are still a little bit high. They're at 0.25, I believe, and I need to get those lower. So I'm a little confused on why this is happening. Uh, I would have thought that with all these water changes, um, I would have gotten things in check. My parameters are in check due to the water changes, but I'm still seeing these zoas melt in front of my eyes, and it's hard not to react. And um, I also considered the fact that maybe because I'm changing the water too often, Maybe that's what's bothering them. I know Zoa, Zoas don't like a lot of change, um, but it, again, they're melting in front of my eyes, so it's hard not to just do a water change. And seeing them improve a little bit after each water change just makes me want to do them every other, every other day. Another thing I've considered is um, about all this sanitizer that I've been using. It may have gotten in my tank, causing an infection. Now I've heard that it's nothing to panic about. A little sanitizer won't hurt in your tank and it would be just cleaned up by the skimmer. It may act a little funky, your skimmer that is, uh, because of the sanitizer, but it's nothing uh, to freak out about. But I don't have a skimmer. So I think uh, next project for me coming up here in the future is just refining my filtration, maybe adding more filtration and uh, figuring that out. So that is where we are at guys. I've been meddling with this tank far too much lately and I'm starting to get a little scared because if all my corals die, I may be done. I might just have to find another hobby. So what are we going to do? What is the one thing I can do to this tank without causing any more harm? That's right, we gotta do a water change, but not just any water change. I'm gonna do an 80% water change. Um, hopefully that will fix the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop recording. I'm all caught up now. Uh, let's do this. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Just finished the water change. It's a little cloudy right now, but uh, I will let you know how everything turned out. Hopefully everything turns out great. See you on the next video. Keep on reefing.